What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Black Eyed Senpai, and today I am going to be bringing you my Sakuyamon deck. Uh, this deck has been performing, well, overperforming my expectations, so I just wanted to share with you my initial build, and we're going to go ahead and start off with the eggs. Uh, for the eggs, we're going to be using one, or well, four, only four eggs, and that is Viximon, formerly known as Pokemon. Uh, I just want this because this has the best skill for this specific deck. Uh, if you use an option card uh, that costs two or more, you get to draw a card. Uh, I mean, you can use Upamon um, in case your opponent does rush you down as your fifth egg. You can use uh, pretty much anything except for like Cupimon because uh, you don't recover in this deck. Uh, but that being said, this deck still is really good. It still is a good powerhouse and it can clear boards. You, you don't have to worry too much about your opponent. So again, just a Viximon as a four of. Next, we're going to our threes, which is gonna be for Rinamon. Uh, so Rinamon is just basically the same as like the Guillemon and Beelzemon has one, I think, uh, where it's, you look at the top four, look for something in her ride line and for the Tamer that goes with it. And then also, this is like the best ESS skill from uh, those, you know, grade three rookies that give you another skill. If you use an option card with two or that costs two or more, you'll notice this pattern. Uh, you get to gain a memory with her when she's in your sources. Next, Patamon. Patamon, I feel, is pretty standard for this type of deck. Um, when you receive Patamon, you know what kind of deck it's going to be. You're going to be reducing DP. And so I just want to gain more memory because along with Renamon, if you have both of them on, on the board and sources, then you get to get two memory every time you drain something, which is great. I love it. And for the final rookie, Salmon. Uh, Salmon, I'm testing this one out. It did perform well. Um, with this ESS of being able to draw this at the end of your turn, so whenever you pass over to your opponent, it's pretty good. I love it. Allows for more stuff and potential even, potential even more tricks. Because if you do it while you have Patamon in some source and you reduce DP, you get you you potentially can extend your turn. Uh, if I were not gonna play that Salmon, I'd be playing the BP3 Salmon. I just need to find one more so I can start testing it. But this one is whenever you attack, uh, no matter what's on top of it, your opponent Digimon loses 1K. Next, we're going on to our level fours. Uh, we're going to be starting off with four Cubimon. Cubimon on Digiball. You look at top three for an option card with plug-in in its name. Add it to hand if you don't. Uh, and then no matter what, everything else goes to the bottom of the deck in any order. Uh, the part that I like about this the most is the Inheritable, uh, where if you use an option card with two or, two or uh, cost of two or more, minus 2k which is really good because that's when we're, this is like the first we're gonna see of like starting to actually really hurt your opponent um, where they have to start worrying about like, oh, it's just that. I don't have to worry about that. No, it all stacks, my friend. All right, next three, Dino Human. Uh, Dino Human, nothing special, just a two cost. He can Digivolve on any of our level threes. Uh, and he has a ESS of when attacking, lose 1k. If you have that BT3 Salamon in there, you go ahead and uh, you're minusing 2k right there. So like uh, Imperial Jamon with the jamming Vmons or whatever else it is, stops it there. Uh, next, Akilamon. Akilamon just you know can Digivolve on a, any card that's already in your deck. Um, and whenever you attack, you kill something that's 5k or below. Uh, I decided to go three and three with those just because I wanted to make room for this. Uh, Pitomon. Uh, there are times where I found myself wanting a blocker. Like, I just needed to block one attack because I cleared their board. They have something in raising. I just need something to take the fall. So, like, there are occasions where I will hard play this, but it's not very often. Or if it's your first turn, you digivolve into something and you're going first, digivolve for one, and then your opponent usually wants to play a tamer. They'll put you to three. You could drop your tamer, put them to one. Uh, depending on what the tamer is that they draw. <clears throat> Next, keeping up with the fashion, 
we are going to be showing you for Talmon. Uh, on Digivolve, you get to play a Rika, which is the tamer for this set, uh, for this deck. Uh, but that part is kind of irrelevant because it's just like the level four ESS. Uh, when you play an option card that plays two or more, two cost or more, minus your opponent by 2k. So if you have this under, well, if you have Cubimon underneath Talmon, that's, and the Sakuyamon's on top of it, or something's on top of this, that's 4k uh, minus, uh, minus that. But if you're on Sakuyamon and you used a option card, that's 7k gone right there. That takes out a lot of level fives, uh, which is really good. And this is my next level five. Uh, Sylphimon, if you couldn't figure that out by now, um, welcome to the deck profile. But Sylphimon is whether you Jawgrass or if you uh, just regular Digivolve, he minuses something by 5k. But if you did Jawgrass, he gets to destroy something uh, that's 5k and below. So any other level 5s, anything that's 10k or below, um, it's pretty good. And his, his ESS, you know, when you swing, you kill something that's fine, uh, that's 5k or below, which is really great. Next, the main lady of the show, uh, Sakuyamon. I love Sakuyamon because she, whenever you use an option card that's uh, two or more, two costs or more, um, she minuses by three. She minuses one of your opponent's Digimon by three, which is not once per turn. So we'll get into how you can do that later. I'll show you guys a little bit something. Uh, but her main skill is when Digivolving, you pick your, your Digimon that's on the board and restand it. So it doesn't matter if it's her, doesn't matter if you Digivolve in Talmon and you're technically warp Digivolving for a cost of two, um, you get to go ahead and restand something. Or if it's something that you already attacked with, restand it. Uh, also, her every tamer that you have on the board currently, when she comes to the board, you get to get that many plug-in option cards from your trash, add them back to your hand. So if you have one tame room, you get one. You get two, two, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this card, in combination with a, with these cards over here that I've already shown you, it's really good. I really do like it. Um, it's not be, it's not even because of the fact that I pulled every single one of these alt arts, um, and it's it's a good deck. So next, we're gonna go over to we're gonna start with the tamers first. Um, we're gonna go with Rika. Rika is your memory tamer. She is essential for the deck. If you run any less than four, like if I could, I'd run five, then you're doing it wrong. Like just put, just stop the video, you're doing it wrong. Uh, next, her ability that's the main selling point for her is whatever, anything from the Sakuyamon ride line. So Sakuyamon, Cubimon, or even Talmon, any of them attack. You can you can rest her. So if I swing with this, you can rest Rika, play a plug-in from your hand for free, still proccing her ability to minus something by two or by 3k, which is great. Like so you get to do that for free, and then proc all your other skills, which is Trust me, it's a long, it's a long process because your opponent's always like, wait, what, what's happening? How's this happening? And the best part is that since everything's happening at the same time, for the most part, you get to uh, choose how they resolve. But Rika is really great. I love this card. Again, if I could, I'd run 10 of it. Uh, next, Tamer, uh, it is TK and Kyrie. This one is a decent substitute, I want TK, like original TK. I just don't have any in my local area, so I have to order them offline, so that's okay. But still, if your opponent decides to go like fully aggro on you, uh, you get two memory. So you'll start, like if you have Rika and TK and Kyrie, you'll have five memory at the, at the beginning of each turn, which is really nice. You don't really need it because you have multiple ways of getting back that memory, but still, it's nice to have. All right, now to the part that you guys are like, hurry up, the options. So I play three, plug in S, two, plug in A, one, plug in B. 
Uh, I play these all just because I wanted to play. I wanted to play six. I really do want to play more. I really wish I could, but I need these last two cards here. Uh, but plug in S, it's basically your warp digivolving. You digivolve on a cost of three for a two cost for the most time, for the most part, because most of the time you're gonna use any of these plugins, it's gonna be with Rika. Um, you're gonna rest her, you're gonna play this for free, and then you're gonna go ahead and warp digivolve into Sakuyamon. So you digivolve into Sakuyamon, you get this back if you only have just that Rika, you get it back to your hand, uh, or any of these. This one, once you warp digivolve, this one gives you jamming. This one gives you security check. Uh, they're all very important. They all have their definite useful points. Um, they all do have a uh, security effect. This one, you get to add a Digimon card. This one lets you, uh, oh, you just draw one from that one. And this one, you, get, uh, you go digging for a tamer. You look on top three for these two. This one is just draw a card. Um, I, like, because of the fact that Sakuyamon doesn't gain power, means that she's still vulnerable to security, which is why I want this one in here. And the fact that you can cycle them over and over again, that's the only reason why I'm running one. If I ever, like, if any changes were to happen, I would probably get rid of these two cards, add one more of this, and add one more of this, because this card is just that good. Like, this card is added in in a lot of decks, the only thing you need is just a tamer to ignore the color restrictions because obviously this is a yellow deck but it's a green blue and red uh, which i don't understand why none of these plugins were yellow uh, but the last two cards of the deck which you will find yourself needing especially if you're running a higher plugin count yellow memory boost yellow memory boost three cost so it procs uh Sukuyaman. it procs Talmon, it procs Renamon, it procs Cubimon, uh, but three cost, look at top four, add a yellow Digimon, which all your yellow Digimon you're gonna want, uh, the only thing it doesn't get is a Kilomon, and then delay, gain three memory. Um, so this is a really good card, I think it's useful, but I'm starting to question it, like, because I really do want to run more plugins, but right now that was the deck profile i really do love this deck um i should be uploading some gameplay soon of this deck to where you guys can see like how the deck actually flows in a game um the decision points the there's certain points where you have like choices you can make choices you should not make um but yeah i should be coming with that soon but thank you all for watching and hopefully you go ahead and decide you want to support me for free and just go ahead and press like and or subscribe i will see you guys in the next one